Hello, welcome to Math with Mr. Blado. I am your host, Mr. Blado. Glad to see you here today. Um, today I want to take a look at how we can use equivalency to help us compare fractions. All right, so in a previous video, I talked about what it means to be equivalent. All right, find the video a little about equivalency if you're not sure what I mean when I'm talking about equivalent. All right, but we're going to take this concept of equivalency, this idea that I can replace one with another because they're equivalent, to help us compare fractions. Now, in general, comparing fractions really isn't that difficult. It's not any anything real fancy, nothing real super complicated. If you understand numerators and denominators, this shouldn't be a big deal to you, right? If I'm looking at three-fourths and two-fourths, I understand denominators, and I understand that that four means that I have a whole that is cut into four pieces, all right? Maybe it's a whole pizza or a whole pie or a whole cake, or maybe it's a whole group of people. I don't know what the whole is, but it's it's just a whole, and it's, it's split into four groups four equal pieces all right the numerators then tell me how many pieces i actually have so if i have three fourths of a whole well then that looks something kind of like this this would be kind of an image that might represent that here's my whole the whole rectangle three out of the four pieces are yellow so three fourths are yellow right this whole is broken into four equal pieces, and three of them are yellow. Now, the two-fourths, well, that just simply means, again, the whole rectangle is cut into four pieces, and two of them are yellow. Now, a couple things to notice about this, when we're looking at equal denominators, I see that this one's cut into four, and this one's cut into four and that those pieces are all the same size. They look identical. The only difference here is this one has an extra yellow rectangle shaded in. Therefore, I can say that 3 fourths is greater than 2 fourths. 3 is more than 2. 3 yellow rectangles? More than 2 yellow rectangles. Not too tough. In fact, if we just think about the words here, let's just think language for a moment. Right? This is just like saying three pickles is more than two pickles. Or maybe three heffalumps, if you're a Winnie the Pooh fan, is more than two heffalumps. Or three noses is more than two noses. Three fourths is more than two fourths. This is just a language thing. This isn't that tough. Three is more than two, so three fourths is more than two fourths. All right? What if, though, my denominators are different. Well, if the denominators are different, what we want to do is we want to think about, I need to adjust my camera a little tiny bit here. Hang on one moment. I'm going to get right back to you after a little disjointed. Actually, you know what? I might be okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not. I'm going to pause. All right. Sorry for the disjointedness there for a moment. Um, if we look at, we have different size denominators, like 5 eighths and 5 twelfths. There are other things that we can look at. Okay, for example, the numerators. Notice that my numerators are the same here. Oh, that's really kind of big too. But let's go back to those denominators for a moment. Eight and 12. Now remember the denominator tells me how many pieces the whole is cut into. How many pieces the whole is divided into. If we talk about pizza, for example, okay, think about this. If you cut a pizza into more and more and more and more slices, what happens to the size of those slices? If I cut a pizza into eight slices, I'm gonna get slices that look kinda like that, eight slices. If I cut it into 12 slices, it looks like this. Look at the size of those pieces. These slices are a lot smaller than these ones, aren't they? That's an important thing to note. If these denominators are the same, as in our previous example, the pieces are all the same size. They're all identical. 
but if the denominators are different, the size of the pieces are going to change. Eight pieces gives me bigger pieces because I'm sharing it with fewer people. I'm splitting up into fewer parts, so the parts are going to be bigger. If I break it up into more pieces, the pieces are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, just like we see over here. If I keep going here, let's say I cut this into 20 slices. Oh my goodness, those pieces are going to be so tiny, right? So small denominator, big pieces. Big denominator, little pieces, okay? Now we look back up here and we see, oh, these numerators. This is actually a pretty easy comparison. Because these numerators are the same, 5 and 5, that's like saying, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to eat 5 slices of pizza. Let's see here. We're going to make it, we're going to go with this color here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, 5 slices of pizza. All of these here. Okay, we're eating all those pieces. Okay, but if I eat five of these ones, one, two, three, four, five. That's all I'm eating. But Mr. Blado, I'm eating five pieces and five pieces. Isn't that the same amount? Well, same amount of pieces, yes. Same amount of pizza, no. Because these pieces are so big. Look at these slices of pizza. They're so big compared to these ones. Five slices is not necessarily equal to five slices. It depends on the size of the slices. So in this case, what I can see here is if I have five slices of pizza and they're big, they're going to be more than the five slices of pizza that are little. So again, this is a pretty easy comparison. Now I've shown you two examples. One, where the denominators were the same. Two, where the numerators were the same. What if neither is the same? What if we're looking at three-fourths compared to five-eighths? Now, my denominators are different, which tells me, ooh, big pieces, little pieces. So I might be inclined to say, Big pieces are more than little pieces. I might be inclined to say that. But maybe I look at the numerators. Oh, three pieces compared to five pieces? Oh, man, if I only have three pieces, that's less than having five pieces. So now it looks like three-fourths is less than five-eighths. Well, wait a second. How, how is that possible? How can we have... 3 fourths be greater than 5 eighths, and 3 fourths is less than 5 eighths. It doesn't work. This becomes, this is where we have a problem when we have different numerators and different denominators. And this is where equivalency can help us. Before we get to that, I want to try to paint a little picture about this, because I know some of you are still probably sitting there saying, but Mr. Blado, Mr. Blado, I really think that 3 fourths is, is less than, than 5 eighths. Or I really think that 3 fourths is more than 5 eighths, because... You know, those four pieces, those are such big pieces, and these are little pieces. And so I, I know this one must be bigger, okay? Some of you still might be thinking like that. I want to show you some, show you an example here. Think about a tug-of-war game, okay? The big pieces, big burly man, big strong guy. The little pieces, little girl. If this was a tug-of-war match, clearly the big guy would win. So if you're looking at only the denominators, yes, you're right. This guy is going to win. However, if I could have not just one little girl, but maybe I had two, or maybe I had three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, eventually here, I'm going to get enough little girls over here that even though they're smaller and not as strong as this big guy over here, even though they're not as big and not as strong, they will win. So it is not enough to only look at the denominators. It's not enough. It's not enough to only look at the numerators. 
we need to replace something. We need to either say, hey, it's me one big guy versus one big girl. Or, you know what, we're going to get rid of this big guy. Let's just make it girls against girls. Okay? If we can do something like that, if we can somehow make them the same, now we can compare them. We can know who's going to win. This is where this concept of equivalent fractions comes into play. Three-fourths. Three-fourths is equivalent to any number of fractions. I can come up with any number of fractions that three-fourths is equivalent to. All right. I can say three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths. I know that because I can do 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. I can say that 3 fourths is equivalent to 9 twelfths. I know that because 3 times 3 is 9. And 4 times 3 is 12. In fact, I can come up with all kinds of different equivalent fractions. Times 4 and times... Um, sorry, times 5 and times 5. Hang on. Hang on. Times 4 and times... Four. I gotta make this a six times four and times four, right? Twelve sixteenths. I can say twelve sixteenths. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, I can do times five and times five. I can do this all day long. I can keep coming up with more equivalent fractions, more and more and more. But this is kind of like saying, how many different ways can you pay for a dollar? How many different ways can you pay for a pack of gum? I can use a one dollar bill, four quarters, ten dimes, twenty nickels, hundred pennies. In fact, if I had 100 pennies in my pocket, guess what? My pants are falling down. My pants are falling down. If I'm going to the store and I'm going to buy a pack of gum, and the clerk says to me, that'll be $1 there, sir, and I have a $1 bill in one pocket and I have 100 pennies in my other pocket, it is beneficial to me to give that clerk the 100 pennies because then my pants can stay up. Okay, that's beneficial to me. Sometimes when I'm comparing fractions, it is beneficial to me. It's going to be helpful to me that I don't use the fractions that are given here. But instead, I use an equivalent form of that fraction. Instead of paying with the $1 bill, I pay with the 100 pennies. Instead of paying, instead of comparing with 3 fourths, I compare with 6 eighths. Now, why would I choose 6 eighths? Simple, really, because 6 eighths has that common denominator. Look at this. Now we're comparing common denominators. Remember how easy that was before? When we compared the 3 fourths to the 2 fourths, the 3 pickles to 2 pickles, 3 heffalumps is more than 2 heffalumps, right? 6 eighths is more than 5 eighths. 6 eighths is greater than 5 eighths. That means that 3 fourths is greater than 5 eighths because 3 fourths and 6 eighths are equivalent, I can use either one in this problem. It doesn't matter which one I use. It makes no difference. That's how we can use equivalent fractions to help us compare fractions. Try one on your own here. Try this. Try comparing 2 fifths to three-fourths. If you pause your video, welcome back. Now, you may have done something a little bit different here, but I looked at this and I said, I can make an equivalent fraction to two-fifths that has a denominator of 20. And I can do the same thing with three-fourths, denominator of 20. So now I can compare common denominators, 8 twentieths, 15 twentieths, and I can clearly see that two-fifths is less than three fourths because eight twentieths is less than fifteen twentieths. I hope this has helped you and that you can go on now and compare fractions using equivalent fractions. Have a great day.